Right now, a fleet of NASA spacecraft are turning their attention to an unusual object speeding through our solar system. In October 2025, Mars briefly became our best lookout for a rare interstellar visitor. A razor-thin streak in Perseverance's night frames triggered a global analysis sprint while three orbiters raced to image the same target. What followed was a tangle of claims, delays, and puzzles. Some chemical, some geometric, that could reshape how we study fast passers-by from beyond the solar system. This is the story of what we saw, what we didn't, and why the missing frames matter. Flash over Mars. On October 2nd, 2025, Amateur astronomer Stefan Burns posted a nine-minute time-lapse from Perseverance's night sky frames. A single hair-thin streak ran steady across the Martian star field. Burns measured its apparent speed near 60 kilometers per second far beyond typical meteors, satellites, or cosmic ray scratches in rover data. At Mars's distance, such speeds point to interstellar visitors. If correct, the track matched the predicted motion of three. I slash a TLAS. Burns documented his method, end to end, aligning frames to a star catalog, setting plate scale from known star separations, verifying timestamps, and measuring motion relative to background stars. He ruled out fixed camera artifacts and one-off cosmic ray hits, published his full stack, and invited replication or refutation. His rigor paired with caution gave the finding weight while he warned against jumping to extraordinary conclusions without independent confirmation. The community mobilized within hours. Hundreds downloaded the frames and restacked them with custom code. Some reproduced the main track and hinted at fainter fast movers in October 3rd data. Others, using different pipelines, saw only noise. Arguments centered on stacking choices, registration, SNR thresholds, and color handling. One group's animation showed a brief green flash at UTC, prompting speculation about a real emission event versus a processing artifact. Without original fits and full telemetry, every claim stayed provisional. Analysts pushed statistics frame to frame, coherence and cosmic ray rejection to a stalemate. The usual quick public release of uncalibrated quick look frames from Mars orbiters failed to appear, deepening the frustration and the question. What happened in the missing frames? Orbiter chase plan. For a few days in early October, Mars had the best geometry on three I slash Atlas. Three orbiters, MRO slash HIRISE and Mars Express, HERSE, were retasked to attempt a flyby capture at 29 million kilometers, about 75 Earth Moon distances. Even in a best case, Heris would see only a smudge. Resolution at that range runs to dozens of kilometers per pixel. And the cameras are tuned for Martian terrain, not distant, fast specs. Teams reprogrammed observation, plans using daily JPL horizons, ephemerides, aiming narrow fields ahead of the predicted path. Without real-time tracking, each exposure was a calculated shot. Too early, and the target missed the frame. Too late, and it vanished into the star field. Cassis prepared four band sequences to look for fragments or jets. RSC would scan for core structure, single nucleus, cluster, or anything unusual. After the window, however, no raw or quick look frames landed in public archives. Inside the missions, the reason was technical. Pipelines tuned for slow landscapes fail on fast, faint movers. Flat fielding, geometric correction, radiometric calibration, and cosmic ray filtering all needed rework. A misregistration of fractions of a pixel can create companions that aren't there. An aggressive stack can erase faint real features. Teams manually checked registration against the ephemeris, flagged odd streaks for review, 
and documented every candidate fragment or flash. The delay was caution, not cover-up. Release too soon, and digital ghosts could ignite a frenzy. Wait, and suspicion grows. Integrity won out over speed. Green glow, debate, comets often glow. Green from swan band emission, when sunlight breaks carbon molecules, notably near 516 and 563 nanometers. If the UTC green flash were real, bicarbon slash C, two activity would be the simple cause. Provisional remarks, however, hinted at spectra with weak or missing C2 bands and a volatile mix heavy in carbon dioxide. Unusual near the sun, making a clean green equals C2. Story, doubtful. A green flash without swan bands is a chemical contradiction. Spectroscopists urged restraint. Mars camera color responses and stacking choices can fake greens. Only time-locked, calibrated spectra tied to the exact flash can decide. If genuine, an unexpected emitter or pathway must be at work. If processing, the mystery evaporates. Until instrument-verified spectra arrive, the flash remains an intriguing but unproven clue. Anomalies. As partial spectral and modeling notes circulated, several puzzles stacked up. Mars Express teams pointed to metal lines where nickel dominated iron, the inverse of typical solar system comets. TIGO indications suggested CO2 outgassing, dwarfing water. Dynamics teams hunted for non-gravitational acceleration. Tiny path nudges from jets, but the trajectory hugged the gravitational arc, implying a large, cohesive body. Mass floor estimates rose toward 10 billion tons, nudging three. Iatlas toward a dense, inert nucleus capable of sustaining a forward plume without spinning apart yet showing little jet-driven drift. None of these alone is conclusive. Together, they tug at the edges of standard models. A separate analysis from AV Loeb's group backtraced 3i slash Atlas and found a 0.6% chance positional overlap with the 1977 WOW signal sky location at 1420 megahertz. The hydrogen line favored in SETI lore. SETI veterans cautioned against post hoc narratives and highlighted uncertainties in both the old radio event and the reconstructed trajectory. Still, the practical upshot was clear. When geometry allows, narrowband radio listening is warranted even if silence remains the most likely outcome. Geometry imposed its own pause. After October 29, three I slash Atlas slipped behind the sun for about five weeks, blinding Earth and Mars-based observers. Early December would reopen a pre-dawn window for four decisive checks. Overall brightness, precise sky position, tail jet shape, and spectral fingerprints. Did the object fragment fade or stray or return ordinary and on time? Between windows, a simple ladder of evidence gained traction. Base rung, repeatability. Real features must reappear in independent stacks with matching timestamps and ephemerides. Next, multiband confirmation. Genuine sources show consistent color ratios across filters. Then, geometric slash dynamic behavior. True companions move in parallel at consistent separations. Top rung, Signatures. Nature struggles to fake deliberate motion. Persistent narrowband radio lines. Repeating geometry. The higher the claim, the higher the rung it must clear. By late October, a cautious scorecard emerged. The perseverance streak looked coherent at 60 kilometers per second and aligned with predicted motion. But time-locked raw data remained missing. The green flash was chemically inconsistent with provisional spectra and needed calibrated, time-matched bands. Spectral hints, nickel prominence, CO2 heavy, water poor and imaging hints, sunward plume, little non-grav drift were odd but not decisive. 
The wow signal overlap was small probability and interesting, justifying future radio checks, but not a claim. Silence from orbiter archives had a credible cause. Retuning pipelines for a fast, faint target takes time, and manual vetting is slow by design. When December's sky reopens, the object will either confirm October's hints, complicate them, or quietly erase them. If it brightens on schedule and shows ordinary chemistry, the case closes as a well-observed interstellar comet with quirks. If it fragments, drifts, or keeps its chemical and dynamical surprises, the case for a rule breaker grows. If narrowband receivers hear only silence at the hydrogen line, one branch of speculation ends. If they hear something structured and persistent, a new story begins. Until then, discipline matters more than headlines. Repeatability, multiband truth, sound geometry, and the toughest tests for the biggest claims. For a brief season, Mars became our deep sky observatory and gave us a thin streak, a contested flash, and a careful data cue. We hold an interstellar puzzle and a plan to test it. When the glare fades and let the evidence, not the noise, decide what 3 I slash Atlas truly is. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Epoch Dive for more amazing documentaries.